Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm Carrie Holloway, nurse practitioner at Peninsula Plastic Surgery, and I have Jamie Eisett with us. Hi. She's our physician's assistant, and we are bringing you another at-home virtual seminar. Today, we're going to talk all about injectables. It's one of our favorite things to do. Oh, we put it in here, guys, <laughs> just in case you forgot what we look like without our masks. <laughs> So, when I say injectables, what should a patient think of? A patient should think about neurotoxins and fillers. Exactly. That's what, when the patients come in and they're not really sure where to start, I always like to have that conversation. So, neurotoxins traditionally used in the upper part of the face, fillers traditionally in the lower part of the face, but... Correct. And when I think of a neurotoxin, I think of muscle relaxation. And when I think of filler, I think filling in a fold or adding volume. Exactly. So these are just some of the product brands that we currently work with and we love all of them. We do, because not everything works the same for everybody. It's true. And that we have. And that's what I was going to say. I feel like patients are always asking us, which brand do you prefer? What would you choose? And honestly, I like different things for different reasons. Sure. So I don't have a personal favorite or a personal preference. It depends on what I'm treating, and that's going to guide what product I want to Correct. use. So again, just to show you, traditionally, neurotoxin is in the upper part of the face, filler filling those folds and lines in the lower part of the face. But we do a lot of things kind of all over. Like Terry said, we go rogue. <laughs> so when you say neurotoxin, we're referring to Botox, Dysport, Javot, and Zeman. Those are kind of the top brands in the industry as far as neurotoxin goes. Correct. In our practice, when it comes to filler, we use Juvederm products and Restylane products. They're all made of hyaluronic acid. Naturally occurring in our skin is what helps hydrate our skin, fill lines and wrinkles, which is why it's perfect as a filler. Correct. And no need for skin testing, unlike older fillers that were bovine collagen, you know, because hyaluronic acid, we produce that naturally. There's no need for that. That's a good point. So let's get into neurotoxin. Again, I liked you, what you said, think muscle mm -hmm. relaxation. Yeah. So those brown lines, those deep labellar lines, the crow's feet, sometimes we'll use it around the mouth for the perioral lines. We can do a little lip flip. So there's lots of things we can do. Lots. So how much, how do, how do you know what, how to treat a patient? So this is the thing, everybody's different. I mean, you typically get the treatment parameters of average unit, units used per area. But I gotta be honest, Carrie, the first time I meet somebody, I don't overload them. Okay. Because you can only add what you can take away. Okay. So it's amazing how well people react to it with a little amount of units, but then it's also amazing how many units you do have to put in somebody that you would think, oh, you're not so bad. So it's all, you know, individual. I exactly what that I agree. I like to be conservative when I meet someone. And I always like to see that patient back in two weeks. Yes. Because just as you said, everything works differently in everybody. Mm -hmm. I might treat one patient with eight units in their frontalis and it's perfect. Mm -hmm. And another patient's gonna come back in two weeks and I'll be like, whoa. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So I think it's important that we do start conservatively and follow that patient and see how they respond. Correct. And then you heard you say we bring patients back in that two to three week uh, period because that's the optimal effect of Botox. It starts to take effect in three to five days, but that two week is the optimal. So it's not going to get any better than that. And then with that being said, if we have new patients out here watching this and they're thinking about trying Botox, mm -hmm. Walk me through a visit. So I come in, I tell you, I hate these forehead lines. What should I expect that day? Am I going to see a result? You're not going to see a result that day. In fact, you know, right after injection, you look like you have little mosquito bites on there because it's a superficial injection. You don't have to go deep to the brain to, or bone to <laughs> get it. Okay. But um, those go away in like 10 minutes. Um, but no, they're not going to see a result that day. I typically say three to five days, you'll start noticing, oh, it is a little harder for me to like move that, work that muscle, but not in a bad way. It's in a good way. 
could I come in on my lunch break? You totally could come in on your lunch break. And guess what? When you go back to work, nobody's ever going to know you did anything. I think probation is kind of like no one knows exactly what you've done when it kicks in. They know you look better, and a lot of people say, oh, you look well rested. They can't put their finger on it, which is what I love about Botox, because it kicks in slowly, and it wears off slowly over that three to four month period, so no one knows. You don't look dramatically different when you wake up. Correct. And for those people who are a little hesitant with Botox, because they don't want to look like Spock, or they don't want to look like a deer in headlights, that's all individual injector like experience all of that stuff but some people like that look hey we'll listen to you but for the patients who are a little bit more like i don't know my husband's afraid of what i'm gonna look like that's the biggest thing i yeah. hear is patients oh my god my husband's gonna kill me he's gonna think i look like and guess what you know what they say they're they say oh my husband didn't notice anything yeah. which she did you know we're not going to make you look like Bob. No. And if that happens, it can be fixed. Okay. So you should never be walking around like this. You need to call your injector. Because <laughs> what, guys, that's an easy fix. Easy fix. Less than two minutes in the yes. office. Absolutely. All right. So let's see. I think coming up, we have some examples of some forehead lines that we corrected. So this is exactly what we were just talking about. The patient came in, she wanted something natural, she hated these lines, she noticed that after putting her makeup on, it was starting to sit in those three layers. layers. So we softened her up. This is her before picture above and below. Two weeks later, you can see she's attempting to raise her eyebrows and this really knocked her out. She <laughs> has a great uh, result. But we could even have treated her a little bit lighter if she wanted if she to. Wanted. Correct. Yeah, you know, and that is another way we decide how many units we're going to do. And I want to point out too, the neuropath, and we keep saying Botox, but we're really referring to a Botox Discord, Javel, Zeman. It's better as a prevention. Correct. So, you know, if you're starting to see those lines and they're really starting to stick around, they're called static lines. It means they're present when you're looking in the mirror. You need to come in because Absolutely. once they're deep and static, the neurotoxin will help soften them, but it won't erase them like this photo that you're seeing. So it really is better as a preventative. Again, um, so men get Botox and Dysport and Javel yes. and Zeman too. Mm -hmm. So this is a patient who really wanted to fix again the forehead lines. And you can see the left side of the screen is his before. And then you have the nice smooth forehead afterwards. And we all, again, this is two weeks. So that's when we always like to see our patients back. Same thing. So on the left side of the screen, you're going to see the patient raising. I'm, I'm sorry, at the top of the screen is her before. So you have raising and static rest at the top of the screen. At the bottom of the screen, you have raising and resting at that two week follow up. So as you can see from her resting photo on the right side of the screen, I think you can see my mouse here. So these are her lines at rest. This is also at rest, so she's not doing anything. So you can see she had a really great result. It actually was able to erase those the static lines. lines. Oh, this is a cool treatment. So this is a patient who had a lip flip. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that? So the lip flip is not like really filler. When we talk about our lips, everybody automatically thinks filler, make my lips bigger. She has a beautiful shaped lip. She has beautiful volume to her lip, but she just wanted a little extra tweak. And so if you put the Botox right along the lining of the lip in little increments, it kind of everts exactly. that lip. So again, going back to what you said, relaxing the muscle. Mm -hmm. The lip muscle is a circular muscle, so it's squeezing in. Yeah. So if you relax it, that upper mm -hmm. lip just kind of opens slightly and it gives you a nice aversion to the top. And that's no filler, guys. Yeah, yeah no, no filler. filler. That's a good one. That's a good one. So this is a patient who complained of a gummy smile. So every time she went to smile, she was very insecure. She felt like you could see too much of her mouth. So this is a quick, easy treatment. We inject right beside the nose. And when she smiles now, that muscle doesn't pull up as well because it's relaxed. And it gives her a nice, natural looking smile with all that gumminess. 
right, now going into filler. So remind us again, what, are, what is filler? What okay, are we talking so about? We want to use to fill it, fill and hold. So patients with their nasal labial folds, right? Um, add volume, so cheeks are huge. People, you know, as we age, our fat pad falls, right? So we put volume in the teeth. Lips are huge, right? No pun intended. Um, <laughs> but that's like our number one, I think. Filler in the lips and the cheeks. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like I think all day long. Probably our most common. Yeah. And again, I think you're the same. We are conservative. Absolutely. You're not going to come in here and leave looking crazy after one visit. Even if you say you want three syringes in your lips, lips. you're going to leave with one. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't want people to be scared. No, our goal is for you. For we don't want our patients, we don't want their friends to know that they're full of filler. Correct. We want you to look natural, more youthful, and normal. Absolutely, that's the biggest thing. Absolutely. So, Jamie, just like you did with the neurotoxin yeah. visit, walk me through. I'm coming in, and I want to get lip filler today. Mm -hmm. What should I expect? Is it going to hurt? Am I going to see anything? Can I go back to work? Good question. Well, nowadays, everybody can go back to work because we're wearing masks. But I'm just kidding. You could go back to work anyway. Um, so a patient who comes in, I would say the number one thing patients are fearful of is having too much of a lip, right? And it's going to hurt really bad. So I do tell patients, this is one of the areas that's very vascular. So that, you know, you probably will bruise. I'm not going to lie. So make sure you give yourself two weeks before anything special, like a wedding or anything like that. But, um, you know, patients will come in. I usually say if you're taking any type of anti-inflammatory, aspirin, omega-3 fatty acids, um, you know, those are all things that can thin the blood and make bruising more probable. <laughs> Um, but they come in, we have a consult, you know, when we do the lips, we think of a 60, 40 bottom lip should be bigger than the top. I get a lot of patients coming in saying, I want to look like Angelina Jolie. I want my upper lip to be like that. I'm like, yeah, no, that's not going to look good. <laughs> but, um, so the beauty with Carrie and I is that, yeah, we do have our patients who use no numbing, like they're hardcore. It's fine. But for me, I like to do a nerve block. So that helps a lot because the patients really feel nothing. And I can say from experience, I've had lip filler with no numbing. I've had lip filler with topical numbing. And I've had lip filler with a dental block. And that's my preference. So nice. Yeah, totally recommend. And I would say that one thing, I'll meet a patient for the first time for Botox, right? And then we'll say, oh, I've done lips in the past, but I'll never do it again because it was so painful. But I like the result. It was just too painful for me. And I'm like, I got something for that. Yeah, I mean, you don't feel anything mm -hmm. with the, when you have the dental block. I didn't feel anything when you have the dental block. It was so good. Um, I do like to point out with filler, anywhere on the face, but especially the lips, the lip timeline that everyone has seen on Instagram, it is real. Yes. So you have your lips done and you look at the mirror right away and you're like, oh, I love it, it looks so good. You get in the car and your heart is racing now because your lips are swelling and you're panicking and you're like, what have I done? And then 24 hours later, you wake up and you're like, I can't believe I did this. I, got, I have to call Jamie, she's gotta fix this. this she was exactly <laughs> And then the swelling goes away, and you're like, oh my gosh, I want more. And then you say, it's gone. Yeah. <laughs> so it is real. So I always say to patients, if you want to get lip filler or any filler, because there's a, a risk of swelling and bruising, do it when you have some downtime. So pick like a Thursday afternoon, wear your mask to work on Friday, chill over the weekend. Monday, you're fine. You're good to go. Um, and then as far as the filler result, they're a little bit variable, but I typically tell patients most of our fillers last nine to 12 months. Um, our cheek filler is up to two years, but there's patients, if you are super active and you're working out every single day, your filler is not going to last 12 months. Um, you need to stay hydrated. You're still going to get a great result, but don't be disappointed if it's not lasting as long as it did in someone else because everyone's metabolism, everyone's different. Absolutely. And I go through the first time you put anything in your body for the first time, your body's like, ooh, what is this? And wants to metabolize it. 
versus this person who comes every six to 12 months and they kind of have like a base residual. Yes. It is longer lasting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She actually had two different treatments. She complained of her gummy smile and a thin lip. So again, the top photos are her before. The bottom photos are her after. And you can see she still looks very natural. We didn't change the shape of her lip. Um, it just gave her a little bit more volume. And that's one full syringe. Yeah. Patients are terrified of one syringe. That's one syringe. She looks natural. It's uh, two weeks because, again, we do every filler and Botox. Everyone's coming back with two weeks because we want to make sure that it looks perfect. Absolutely. And so for our patients who want that Angelina Jolie, we basically say it's not going to happen this visit. You will see something, but if you want to eventually get to that, you know, you come back three to four months later and we build upon it versus there's no way you're shoving three syringes in somebody's lip for the first time because you could risk vascular injury, all this yeah. other bunch of stuff that you just don't even want to. And it looks very unnatural. Not at all. No. This is a patient. We did a little bit of tear trough filler. This is a perfect example of, I do have a preference in this part of the face. So I'm always going to pick Restylane. And she's your expert. <laughs> I don't know about that, but I just, I love that product for under the eye. It doesn't pull in too much water. You don't want a puffy under eye. You want it to look natural. And it's least likely to cause a Tyndall effect. That means if filler is placed too superficially under the skin, the light will catch it and it almost reflects a blue hue. It does bruise. Yeah, so, and I, that's why, so I prefer Restylane in this product, but on other parts of the face, I don't necessarily prefer Restylane. I might use something different. Right. This is a lower mouth correction. Um, this patient hated her frown. You can see all her corners of her mouth. They turned down the RBF. The RBF. No one wants RBF. No. And we also did a little bit of a lip augmentation with this. I love this. Let me see if I can move us out of the way. This is a patient with four syringes. And you know, the average Joe is going to be like, four syringes? She looks totally normal. She's yeah. natural. In fact, I could even add more and she'd still look natural. Correct. Um, this is a patient who typically we would recommend surgical intervention, like a mini facelift. There's some patients that just aren't ready for surgery. In this case, we didn't have time because we were preparing her for an event. The event was a couple weeks away. She didn't have the downtime for healing, but she wanted to look a little bit refreshed. So she has filler in each cheek. And then we did filler around the nasal labia folds and the marionette. And she, I mean, she was ecstatic. And I agree, I love this result, but this is a very realistic filler result with four syringes. Yeah, it's a lot. Just the smoother. Like mm -hmm. Again, oh, this is our first real lip filler, I guess. Yeah. Um, so this is all we did on this patient. She wanted more volume in her lips. Again, she has a great shape. Mm -hmm. We're not changing the shape of anybody's lips. We're just enhancing what you already have. Sure. This is your Angelina Jolie, not quite because her lips are beautiful, but um, she wanted a big full lip. So her above picture, again, that's her before. The bottom is her after, but this is actually two weeks after her second syringe filler. So this patient has a total of two syringes. She wanted to build on her lips, so we did it slowly over time. So we injected a syringe, had her come back in two weeks, talked about adding a second syringe. She came back two months later, we added a second syringe. This is two weeks after that second syringe. All right, so we're gonna move into Kybella. So Kybella is an injectable that permanently destroys fat cells. So it's approved for that submental region, kind of that little fat pad we get right under our chin. Um, I feel like it's good for that patient that isn't horrible, right? Yes. But if you're really hanging, you're gonna think upper neck lift, yeah. lower face lift to really get that optimal result. This is truly gonna be just that little fat head. No skin. It's not good for relaxed skin. Again, yeah. you're, you're thinking more surgery. 
Um, but you're right, it's just kind of that person, when you're looking at their profile, they're like, you know, there's something I can't put my finger on, and I just feel like I have a little bit of a double chin. This is that patient. It's gotta be the ideal candidate. Um, typically, I tell patients to plan on at least three treatments. We like to space them about six to eight weeks apart. The day of your visit, just like the filler, we'll do a consult. It, um, it's slightly uncomfortable, but it's not terrible. It's a, it's a stinging kind of a burning sensation, but you do need a little bit of downtime because you will have some swelling and you'll feel more insecure about it than it actually looks, but it feels like almost like a bogginess or like a oh, ball frog. Um, and people around you are like, I don't really see it. I guess I see a little bit, but it feels like it looks worse than it looks. Correct. Does that make sense? That makes sense. <laughs> I guess the people are already a little bit you know, they're they're conscious of it anyway. <laughs> when you have a little bit. Yeah. Uh, a male patient who had, he actually had two treatments of Fibella and was very happy, so we didn't do a third. Um, but most patients, I will say, need on average three treatments. And he had a great result. It's permanent. It's destroying the fat cell. It relies on your body to then come back and clean up the, the dead fat cell, if you will. Um, but yeah, this was a great result. And that concludes our presentation. Do you have anything to add? How long after the Fibella treatment do people see, once the bullfrog and all that, how long? No, I usually tell patients I wouldn't plan on seeing any improvement until 12 weeks. Okay. So I usually say when you come back to see me for your third treatment, that's when we're going to be able to start saying, oh yeah, I'm seeing something. I like this. And so if I did your third treatment today, mm -hmm. I would bring you back 12 weeks after your third treatment to really look at your before and after photos. Got it. So, cool. yeah. so check us out on Facebook and Instagram and call today to schedule your consult. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them below. We'll try to get back to you in a timely manner. And you can always call our office for any questions or concerns. Have a great day.